one clarification of consensus. We invite Jordi Palette to make the presentation. Let me remind you that the author has 10 minutes. There you are, Jordi. Thank you. This proposal is version number one of something that was dealt with at the PDP. And in fact, this is something that I have noted in recent proposals, namely that this is something that is important to carry out. Now, to summarize things, and I'm not going to read the entire slide out, at the PDP, we have a definition of consensus that did not exist in the previous PDP. In addition to that, there is a paragraph that tries to summarize this because this is quite a wide description. Now, it turns out that on several occasions, the moderators have made observations on the fact that there was a lack of consistency between the wording of the text when they try to apply the definition of consensus. This because of the fact that in some cases there were not sufficient comments. I think that is a specific wording of the PDP regarding certain versions of some of the proposals. Now, it is quite true that what was not at all the spirit when I drafted the current PDP, but there is a definition here that I think that considering the experience is too strict. So what do we seek to change? The current text, the current text defines uh, brief uh, consensus when this is supported by significant opinions after a wide discussion and that no irrefutable technical objections per, uh, continue, persist. And what I'm proposing, a wide discussion after the diverse versions. This is the first change. So why am I proposing this and what is my argument? This is because on many occasions, because there is a very limited participation of the community, we have version one, there are objections, there are comments. In version two, there could can, we could have some objections and comments. And in version three, all the objections have been corrected, but there are no comments in favor or against. So in those cases, and this has happened on se several times, and the moderators can confirm this, and the authors ex would like to know why there's no consensus, but the moderators consider that there is no consensus because in the last version there were no comments, not even in favor. So this is what we intend to correct with this minor change to this paragraph. Now let me give you a specific example of this situation and I will expand. You were aware that recently we had two competitive proposal for the chair of the PDP. Those proposals received comments, but these expired because we created a working group to have a unified proposal. And the situation now is that this unified proposal had no comments against or in favor, but nevertheless, it was declared that it had consensus. Now, logically, this would have been appealed because the PDP text was not being complied with. There was no appeal to this because the intention was to find a solution to the problem and because we understood that they had determined that there was consensus because there were no objections first and secondly because observations and comments, positive observation and comments had been made to the two previous versions. So this is a common situation. There is a discussion in one version and then in the other and in none versions. The objections are corrected. We have the final version. Everything is settled, but we cannot declare that there is consensus or we shouldn't do so if we follow the PDP text by the word, literally. That's a first point, the first problem. And secondly, on some occasions, there are simple 
changes that are minor edits or grammatical corrections or other types of edits that cannot be done because there is no discussion at all. These are things that everyone agrees, for example, taking out a comment or uh, correcting a grammar mistake or something. And I have felt the temptation of submitting proposal to bring about these changes because the staff as a secretary should be able to do those minor edits automatically, but the t staff tells that, that we have to submit a proposal even if this, these are grammatical changes. There, ha there was a discussion in the list, and I think the list focused more on the second change that I'm proposing. That is why my opinion is that either because of the wording or the way this change is being proposed, I'm going too far. But I think it would be a good idea that the first paragraph, the change of proposed by the first paragraph is something that we need. The second one, maybe not. So my proposal, I don't know whether you would like to measure the consensus, but my proposal is let us not measure consensus. Let us have a discussion where we distinguish the second paragraph from the first, and in that case, I will prepare a new version containing only the first paragraph. So that's what I'm proposing now, and this is something that the moderators have to decide. It's not that those who t take the floor or those who wish to participate in the discussion list distinguish between the first and the second correction so that we can come in agreement regarding future versions. And I think that, having said that, I have come to the end of my presentation. Mariela, I would like to know whether the moderators would like to measure consensus or not, or make any reference to my what I've said. I understand that this would not be an editorial change, so it's not suitable for last call, uh, but the, there is an option in the PDP stating that before determining consensus, it can be decided whether the second paragraph is removed and we only keep the first one. This has never been applied, but this is something contained in the PDP. Well, what we think and what previous moderators also agree on is that this is not uh, exact science. This is something that we measure on a proposal by proposal basis. And as we go along, we define things depending on what we see and on the comments. To tell the truth, there are proposals that we do agree that we have to see whether they are where they agree and that the changes are good. So we need to have comments whether we agree on the changes or not. So this depends. The consensus is no exact science, and that is my specific opinion, and I think we agree. We all agree. Those of us who have been chairs so far agree on this. In fact, I'm the first one who understands that point, and the definition of consensus is something that I'm working on always at IETF and in the other RIRs. And this happens all the time. And evidently, the moderators also have an element of subjectivity. And with this first paragraph, the intention is to limit that subjectivity because we are aware that on many occasions, because there are no objections and because people agree, they just don't speak. So we can create a situation in which a proposal has been approved in the sense that it has consensus, but the author says, well, okay, there are no objections. That's a point. And especially that somehow we could understand that it's a quote-unquote discriminatory treatment between uh, the different proposals because in some say there is no discussion but there there was in the past and in others uh, well we, we can't go on because there is no being discussion so that is too subjective that's my view yes anyway let's listen to the community after the impact assessment let's let's go on like that mariela please Fíjate.
Bueno, esperamos la presentación. So while we wait for the presentation to appear. Estamos, ya estamos. Son los análisis de impacto que se registran. Estamos. No, es esa, no es esa. Declaración de consenso. Consensus Declaration, LAC 2023-2. LAC 2023-1. It's LAC 2023-1. This is a bit long. I don't want to say it by heart. So, comments by the staff. Taking the proposal by the author as a single paragraph, this paragraph introduces a number of factual elements, including the uh, terms uh, uh, simple proposals, uh, practically editorial changes, and uh, evidently necessary. And as to the last uh, sentence, we don't think it is convenient to give a consensus, assuming that a proposal is similar to another that had a discussion. We interpret that the paragraph somehow intends to solve the progress of the discussions, and we see that this is contrary to the spirit of the consensus decisions. The third comment is that we believe that it's more dangerous to give consensus to a proposal that had no discussion rather than a proposal as relevant as it may be does not reach consensus because of a lack of participation. Having said that, our recommendation is to rethink this proposal as a method for solving a problem and to any availed to incorporate uh, general considerations uh, uh, for the for consensus. So, if this proposal is approved, it wouldn't have an impact on any of the systems, and the implementation would be right away. Thank you, Jordi. I clarified with Mariela. I would. I don't want to have any doubts that the comments refer to the second paragraph, precisely the one that I'm proposing to delete. So I'm going to discuss only the first paragraph, that is to, uh, so we won't have any doubts. Could you show my slides, please? Bueno, creo que solo me falta. I think that I only the only thing that was missing. No, this is not the one. It's twenty twenty three one one.
I see. There, yes. I insist that Mariela's comments refer to the second paragraph, and what I'm proposing here is not included in the next version of this proposal. So, at any rate, I'm going to answer them. This paragraph introduces a number of subjective elements, and I answer it's just as subjective as the uh, chair today. Rather, the country, we are curbing it. And the second thing that Mariela said is, is exactly what the chairs have said about the re recent approval of the election. If without contemplating this in the PDP, we are generating discrimination between the proposals uh incrementing subjectivity uh, and then uh, the possibility of appeals because some others may have a, may claim about this the staff is interpreting that we are demanding but it's not that you are not demanding things of the chairs with following this thread of thought, we wouldn't move any forward with standardization. Very often in the ADF, there are no comments in the last version, and the lack of comments implies that uh, the objections to the previous uh, versions have been uh, solved. I think that's all. Thank you. Thank you, Jordi. So now let's start with our discussion. So uh, let's see the, the microphones and uh, in the room, uh, and um, let's hear the uh, uh, questions. And yes, in 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 Portuguese, it's about the papo. Uh, oh, raise your your hand if you want to speak in Zoom. So let me let's start with uh, the comment by Ariel. Good afternoon. I'm going to start to, to, uh, to speak as a former chair of the forum. Dear Jordi, I don't know how many tens or hundreds of hours uh, talking, etc., while I was a chair during my term. Indeed, the consensus is very, very harsh. It is very difficult. It is subjective. As a matter of fact, I would say that it's a handicraft. I doubt that in the context we work, it may, it may be even possible to put it in black and white and to turn it into a perfect algorithm. It is highly subjective and I absolutely subjective. I think that the community elects us as chairs in the conviction that we are going to take care of the proposals that uh, we receive and that they go through the PDP, that they will have enough acceptance of uh, the community for the benefit of the community. So maybe subjectively some proposals may appear to be to benefit and others not. But it has to do with that, that uh, the chair speaks with the author, with the community, a lot with the staff of LACNIC. And again, I think that if we want uh, consensus to be perfect it shouldn't be a consensus we would be a digital we would just uh, ha ask everybody to vote and have a majority i'm telling the, the public our greatest discussions where i think that this problem that is presented in the forum has already been solved uh, or i and i think that it hasn't been solved so it's absolutely subjective. I see it very difficult for it to be perfect. That is why each of the chairs, we're all human, we each have our biases, our criteria. It may uh, seem as if some proposals so were given advantage handicap uh, compared to others. Uh, hopefully that was not the case during my term. but. 
I think that these proposals should not be accepted. I'm not in favor of this proposal. And I think it's absolutely human for these things to occur. And I can't think of how to make it perfect. I don't think this is the way. Thank you. Ariel, don't you think that if we can limit that subjectivity just with the first paragraph, as I said earlier, we would help uh, the moderators and limit that subjectivity? Uh, in other terms, if the proposal um, just has no comments, uh, not even in favor, the moderators the chairs, would they just uh, have to judge whether the objections have been lifted? So we are, we are avoiding new discussions if there are no comments. Well, the thing is that that is the key. The objections have been raised. It's not because the chair says it or the author says it. It must be the community. There has to be a wide experience. Uh, uh, discussion to make sure that the objections have been raised. And that is why I told Edmundo, well, I had this objection and this objection, and I consider it solved in version two, and that's why I'm in favor. And that is why I got up and mentioned that on the microphone. I think that's a healthy way to solve objections and not to somehow be solved on the the basis of uh, the bias of either the chair or the author. I would agree with you if those who had objections uh, said, I, I no longer have objections, and that's not the thing. Let's hear somebody else. Ricardo. Ricardo Patara. As I... Uh, I, I, I am against uh, the... Uh, and this proposal, even with the change introduced of measuring consensus only in the first paragraph today here. Um, and the, the author said, enough comments and that's different from no comments if there are no comments you can't you it's not the same as enough comments that is a proposal that is presented in the list and there are no comments it generates doubts and i agree with you what happens with the communities is it that they didn't understand they don't want to participate they're not interested you have to investigate that but somehow in another way i think that the proposal, as it is, even in the first paragraph, introduces more nuances for interpretation that lead to trouble, and I'm going to explain uh, why afterwards. And specifically regarding one of the points, uh, well, the second paragraph, but even though in previous versions there were comments that motivated a new version, in order to correct the observations. So that is the comment it contained in the justification. But this proposal doesn't convey the same idea. The proposal says, because of its nature and editorial com not, uh, ed edits, etc., could be also the case of a discussion made for previous version. So it's quite a risk to assume that what occurred in the past can be applied to what comes afterwards. And finally, almost reaching the end of this, the example that you mentioned regarding the election of the chairs, there were comments there. And I recall I made a comment myself at that time. I was one of the authors, but I was, I was, I was a member of the community. So another point is that you are very much used uh, to the experience at the IETF, but these are different environments. Very often to find a solution for a technical, uh, to find a technical solution in the context of the ETF is quite different to find a solution within our environment here. And here I agree with the comments made by Ariel in the sense that assuming that a version responded to the comments in a 
the comments made to a previous version doesn't mean that the comments apply to the new version. So <clears throat> our context is different from the IETF context. So using these examples, I know the IETF has a lot of participation, but these are different situations. Ricardo, I understand some of the points that you are referring to, but according to that, that would apply when the authors would say, well, that that's fine, and then if the would it be enough if the moderators say uh, that there have been comments? And I think that we should either take into account the comments and the solution resolution of these objections, or that there are when there are no more objections. But unfortunately, the community will not speak when it is required, but when they wish to. Hopefully, that would be different. But. I'm halfway through between what you are saying and what I am saying. But it is quite clear that we have to appeal the proposal made by the electoral process. There have been no comments. The comments made by the authors are not valid. Uh, I mean, someone in, uh, is anyone making comments or questions in the Zoom? No, no one. I apologize. Yes, there is a comment or a question. Fernando Ferediani raised his hand. Good afternoon. Can I take the floor? Yes, go ahead. Good afternoon. I'm Emiliano Vernez from the National University of Salta in Argentina. This is the first time I take the floor in this forum. So I'm a bit nervous. But the point of consensus is partly my interest in studying this and the consensus in the context of communities such as these regarding internet governance. That is why I was very much interested in the proposal made by the author and specifically this proposal. Regarding the second paragraph, I coincide with what some of the people who took the floor before me stated, namely that some terms are somehow ambiguous and it would be the opposite to what the author was, be, was proposing regarding eliminating subjectivity. So I think that vagueness or ambiguity might lead to the interpretation leading in one or the other direction. So I do coincide with the fact that that paragraph should be corrected. Now, specifically regarding consensus, what I have observed from other technical communities or other governance communities is that the lack of participation and the lack of comments is a problem. Now, the way in which these communities try to figure out solutions is not removing the requirement to make comments, but quite the opposite, to promote participation and through some kind of incentive to try and make the members of communities make comments to that proposal. In my opinion, processes necessarily should count on the participation and on the comments. That has to be encouraged. And when there are proposals that have no comments, this might be an indication that the community is not interested in that. No comments might indicate that there is no interest. And if there is no interest, probably that proposal wouldn't be necessary. I don't know how you uh, verify that, but that would be a point. And in that sense, and to close, I think that it wouldn't be desirable to incorporate that change because ultimately the underlying argument is that if there are no comments, then the proposals could be then uh, validated. So we have to seek mechanisms to encourage participation and to encourage those who would be interested to make comments in order for the proposal to continue through to the ratification stage. 
Let me make a comment to your, what you have said. In the first paragraph, I state that no comments in the latest version, but there were comments in the previous versions, and those objections were corrected. Uh, that's, that is something I wanted to clarify. Thank you. Fernando Frediani in the Zoom is asking for the floor. Franco. Fernando, you have the floor. Can you hear me? Good afternoon, everyone. I would like to make a reflection. This proposal is a very simple proposal, and it's very simple to analyze, and it's difficult to have a strong opinion regarding this. When I stated my opinion in the list, I expressed my opinion in two different directions. So I'm going to start with the easiest part. And this has to do with the second paragraph. I think that the majority here agree that it is not desirable at all to include just anything in the test text that forces consensus. But when we reach consensus, Nothing is better than having a voting system. That's a good side in the sense of having something that is not susceptible, for example, voting that can suffer manipulation for economic reasons. And then we have subjectivity that could privilege the merit of that proposal. So I think that the majority would agree that it is not mandatory to reach the consensus. But a positive thing is in the first paragraph that expands on the point that consensus can be reached if no comments are made in the final version. The example that was used for election of the chairs is quite correct. The authors made comments, but of course, the authors are the ones who discuss things actively, but there were no comments there, and things were working fine, and the proposal reached consensus. So the changes proposed for the first paragraph has to do with the fact that the chairs give the consensus to what has been questioned. So that change in the first paragraph allows the chairs to justify things in a better way, this in the sense of the consensus. So what I see, uh, uh, I see that it is interesting to have the first paragraph, but to suggest this as an obligation, I have my reservations. I don't agree with that. Anyone else who wishes to take the floor? So let us speed up. Thank you very much for sharing your opinions. We'll now go over to measuring the temperature in the room to take this into account when we measure consensus. Let me remind you that the Zoom tool, although it states voting, we are just tapping the temperature in the room. The results is evaluated based on the this is no voting process, as we mentioned earlier. So let us check the temperature in the room. And in the Zoom, please let us start with a poll. LACNIC staff will, assess us, will assist us with counting hands. Please raise your hand if you are in favor of this proposal. Thank you. Please raise your hand and keep it raised if you are against this proposal.
Muchas gracias. Thank you. Please raise your hand if you abstain. And keep your hand raised. Thank you very much, everyone. So the proposal lacked 2023 one version one clarifying the definition of consensus will complete the eight weeks on June the 7th, 2023, as from that date and within two weeks, we as chairs will communicate whether this proposal reaches consensus. We invite you to follow the discussion in the policy list. Thank you very much, Jordi. So before closing the forum, we will finish at 3.30 because we have the general members assembly. We have here a space sponsored by We Her Cars. <laughs> well, this is open microphone for the community where you can feel free to make comments, general comments, comments on the proposals. We will have 10 minutes for this. We had 15 minutes originally, but we're going to only have 10 minutes for this open mic.